The foreman in Silicon Valley's trial of the century takes us inside the jury room. Tech Shop CEO Mark Hatch breaks down the maker movement and video advertising made just for you. Our reporters from Forbes, Eric Savitz, and Mike Cray of Investors Business Daily, this week on Press Here. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott McGrew. The chances are pretty solid that someone watching right now is named Amy. So I would like to say to you, Amy, I'm glad you're watching. And Amy, I hope you have a very good day. Now, if you're named Amy, that felt pretty darn good. Thanks for choosing AT&T, Amy. This video explains the key elements of your bill. And AT&T now sends out a video which walks you through your bill using your name, Amy, or Bill for that matter. Whatever your name is, it's personalized. The numbers, too. This is Amy's actual bill with her specific details. This is your total amount. It's technology developed by a company called Sunday Sky, creating tailor-made videos. Say you browse OfficeDepot.com looking at printers but never buy one. The next time you log on YouTube, the pre-roll advertisement might be for the very printer you were thinking about buying. Grab it today at 25% off. Jim Dixo is the president of Sunday Sky. He's joined by Mark, uh, Mike Cray, rather, of Investors Business Daily and Eric Savitz of Forbes. I think, Jim, there's going to come a day in which we're going to look back at this very telecast and laugh at how quaint it was, that, that we're kind of amazed that you can send out videos that are personalized to people's names and, and what they, they need and want, because there's going to be come a day fairly soon where I would imagine that's going to be standard procedure. Yeah, that's the basis of the company is that we believe that every engagement with a customer should be personalized at some level and the fact that we can create videos that are personalized in real time allows us to deliver that personal experience in a way that's more entertaining and more engaging. Do you have proof of that? I mean, do you know that? I mean, I know that in my head that if you use my name in the video, I'll pay more attention, but do you have actual proof? Yeah, so what, uh, when we look at any program that we run with a customer, we set a control group up where we give a certain set of customers an experience without the video and the other customers an experience with the video, and then we measure key metrics about uh, the call-in rate to the call center, churn rate, um, things like that that allow us to evaluate how effective the video is in driving an action that the company is trying to deliver. Are you doing this primarily with things like bill percentment, or what are, what are the other... Uh, use cases for yeah. doing this. So there are customers that are using this as part of an onboarding experience for a new customer. So when you acquire a customer and you want to explain what they just purchased and the status of that purchase, uh, when the product's going to be shipped, things of that nature. We have engagements where companies are trying to target customers that are at the end of a service plan and they want to try and get them to renew the plan. Mm -hmm. And we also have engagements with customers who are trying to advertise and want to acquire new customers. And so we're delivering a, a, a video that's driving a, uh, a sales engagement by bringing a visitor back to a website to buy something. So okay. multiple different ways that it's applied. Because I know you, you, know, you talk about the balance between information and entertainment, but there's the upsell balance too. And is that that's the, is that the big? You're, we're, we're talking about the ROI really of this thing. So is that is that the key part of the of the whole thing? Well, there's a couple of ways that companies look at success. One is can they take costs out of customer service? Two is can they acquire new customers or increase the revenue from existing customers? Three is can they retain customers that they already have at a higher rate? And then lastly, can they deliver an experience that's measurable and, and everyone knows customer experience these days drives value. And, and you're delivering this experience on the fly. I mean, you, the, the Amy is inserted or the, the numbers, or in the case of the printers, uh, offering me 25% off a printer I just looked at could be 35% or 50% and the narrator would change as Office Depot or whatnot saw fit. Right, so the, the way it works is that the videos are either personalized to the individual if you have data about their experience with you, or it's personalized to their behavior if they're on a website browsing and then leave. Our software knows what you've looked at, knows when you looked at it, and when you go on a website to watch a video like YouTube, we'll actually show you an ad for the product okay, you view. So, so this is the part that bothers me, because uh, I would worry if I so if that let's let's take your scenario. I go on a retailer's website. I'm looking at printers. I surf over to YouTube, and the first thing I see is a pre-roll ad for the very printer that I'm I'm looking at. It feels to me like you're going to get pushback from 
private on people with from people with privacy concerns. Uh, why do you have that information? Why has that information been shared on the website? Now, I'm not sure that it does in a way where then I'm not in the way he's doing it, but I, you know, you can say shopping for umbrellas, you, you can see umbrella right. ads mm -hmm. later in right. some fashion. Right. So do you, are you getting any pushback or do you see an issue there? Well, so the, the idea of doing retargeted advertising already exists and has been done for years and there are companies that have built large businesses doing that. So the experience of having a personalized ad is not new or unique. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't feel like we're trying to blaze new ground in that area. Uh, making the video ad personalized is areas where we think we are blazing new grounds, where the, the ad is your ad for you. And, and I guess the question we ask people when they, they talk about those concerns is, would you rather see an ad for an automobile that you have no desire to buy or an ad for a printer that you were actually considering to buy? And with 25% mm -hmm. off. With 25% <laughs> off. And most people would rather have a personalized ad than a generic ad. Is, is our, our position, and, and we're seeing value that we're able to create with that. Well, yeah, I think what Eric's talking about, you know, people are just getting inundated with ads in general. Yeah. But the one thing I, I noticed on, on your marketing materials, Lenovo's a customer, yeah. and you said every Lenovo person who read, who looked at this video, 5% bought, wound up making a purchase. So which my is question a, is, which is a lot. That's, that's a, a lot. Very Put, putting that right. aside, though, it's a lot if you get a lot of people to watch. Right. So my question, do you, as part of what you bring to the table in your company, getting people to watch these right. videos? So, yeah, that, that's part of it. So there are ways that you can put the video placement on a website that gives higher click through. So above the, above the picture, upper left, is better than a, a link below the picture, lower right, as an example. Uh, but we also have customers that are actually sending the videos out to their end customers via email or SMS, and we also have the ability to insert those ads where we're actually placing the ads in front of people. So there's multiple ways to do that. When you send those, a minute left here. When you send those emails with an embedded video in them, what kind of click-through rates do you get? Are people willing to watch them? Uh, at, the click-through rate is actually higher than traditional email click-through rates, and the, the actual call-to-action rate on the video is higher than the call-to-action rate of general email. So on a, on a relative basis, we're driving both open rate, click-through rate, and, and call-to-action rate at higher levels than they would have otherwise. Jim Dixo is president of uh, Sunday Sky out of New York City. We appreciate you being with us here this morning. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. Up next, meet the foreman of the jury who gave Apple a billion reasons to celebrate. Press Here will be back in a minute.